Today we're learning how to find the mass moment of inertia of a rigid body. When a rigid body is undergoing rotation, then our sum of the moments equation says that the sum of the moments is equal to this mass moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. And you notice the g uh, says that uh, that's the axis passing through the uh, center of mass of the uh, object. So by definition, and uh, mass moment inertia can be found by integration. The definition is it's the integral of r squared dm. So dm would be any small piece of mass in the body. r would be the distance away from the axis that we're trying to uh, determine the mass moment inertia about. So we will work uh, one or two in class that uh, where we actually do the integration, but most of the time we don't need to do that. Uh, for simple shapes, then the mass moment has been tabulated. So, for example, here are the uh, here's out of the table for a cylinder. You can see that there's the mass moment inertia tabulated for uh, three axes, all of which pass through the center of mass g. And of course, it um, depends on which axis that we're looking at as to what the rotation is as to uh, which one of these that we use. For example, the uh, uh, moment of inertia about the z axis would be used if the um, cylinder is spinning like a wheel would. On the other hand, if it's being um, rotated end over end, then we'd use either the x or the i, x or y axes in those cases. And again, important to remember that these axes all pass through the center of mass g. Now sometimes we need to uh, find the moment of inertia about another axis, one that does not pass through the center of mass. And for that, we're going to use what's known as the parallel axis theorem. So let's take a look at a simple thin rod here. Uh, we want to find, because we're going to rotate this about, uh, about an axis on the end of the rod, we want to find what the um, mass moment of inertia is about the x prime axis, which again is, is at the end of the rod, uh, as opposed to the x axis, which runs through the center of mass. But you do notice those two axes are parallel. And the parallel axis theorem reads like this, that that mass moment of inertia about our x prime axis, we take the mass moment of inertia of the parallel axis that runs through the center of mass, which would be the ix, and we add to that the mass of the rod plus d squared, and d is the distance between the two axes. So here's our uh, uh, tabulated values for a slender rod. We can see that our ix value is 1 12th the mass times the length of the rod squared. And so we'll apply the parallel axis theorem to find the mass moment of inertia about the x prime axis. And in this case, the distance between the two axes would be half the L, L over 2. And so we have 1 12th ML squared plus M times quantity L over 2 quantity squared, which ends up being 1 12th plus 1 4th ML squared, or 1 3rd ML squared. Now that comes in really handy if we're going to look at uh, bodies that are made up of more than one simple shapes, for example this pendulum. If we needed to find the uh, uh, mass moment inertia about the uh, axis up at the top of the pendulum, then um, we can add the mass moments of inertia of the individual parts, that is the rod and either the sphere or the, uh, the, or the uh, cylinder down at the bottom. You can add them together as long as they are about the same axis. So for that means you'll have to use the parallel axis theorem for each of the components to find the mass moment of inertia about the axis you're interested in. Then you can add them uh, algebraically. One last thing we talk about, sometimes what's given in a problem statement is the radius of gyration. By definition, the radius of gyration, which would give the symbol k, is just the square root of I over M, so mass moment inertia divided by mass. So when you do that, you've removed the mass from the uh, quantity here, and you end up with a, um, a quantity that is a function of the geometry and not of the mass. That is, if you have two parts made out of different materials but have exactly the same geometry, then they're going to have the same radius of gyration. So in some problems, you'll be given the mass and the radius of gyration, and so to find the mass moment of inertia, it's just equal to k squared times m. So next class, we're going to just keep going with a little bit more about mass moments of inertia 
and then after that, with that foundation, we'll start looking at problems of rigid bodies that are undergoing translation or general plane motion.